Hello, today I'm here to give you an overview of the interface for Galactic Civilizations 4. Uh, there's a perimeter of how much land, or I'm sorry, space you're able to explore. But let's go ahead and go through the menus. You can actually get to most of the things in the game from several different spots. But this is considered one of the most common menus that you'll go through. Uh, you have your notifications up here. And lots of these will go to a menu automatically if you click on them. Uh, the upper left corner shows you what you're researching right now and how many turns you have left. These are your resources that you have available. The upper right has your advisors, it has the date, and it also has a few different menus which are actually redundant down here. There's a lot of redundancy in this game. But I'll go ahead and go through some things. So down here at the far left, you have your civilizations menu. And that actually has seven different tabs you can click on. Like the commands at the far right, that's for basically if you want to move your fleets automatically. They have that set up and you can control building through there if you want. Uh, this gives an overview of your economy. Your colonies are all listed out. Uh, trade agreements. Your timeline, which you can look at different uh, powers and whatnot that you're assessing. Uh, your reports. And your stats, which pretty much just rank how far you are in comparison to the rest of the galaxy. So that's it for that one. Now over here you have the leaders tab. This is a little bit new. You recruit leaders, they come up and you pay a small fee to recruit them. And you can use them for a variety of things. You have a minister of every major office. In this case, I don't have any one station there yet. But actually I can make an minister of exploration by just dragging unassigned leaders over to there. Governors. Every planet has a governor. In this game, you can't just start building. You have to make a governor for the planet before you're able to build anything on it. Then uh, next, we have diplomats. Uh, and you have commanders. At the beginning of the game, you'll usually have about three ships. And they're available. All you have to do is pick a commander and then once you drag and drop them on top of the ship, the ship will automatically appear right outside your home planet and you can start using it. Now the next one we have is policies. There are a number of different policies you can choose from and you put them in your policies menu. As you go through the game, you'll unlock more options, but you start with two. You can control your overall tax rate from here. Um, this is the uh, ideology. In the third game, they had good, evil, and pragmatic. And this one, they have a whole bunch of different ones. We'll get into that in a later menu. So over here is your ideology menu. Everything has a dichotomy, like there's calm versus focus, there's authority versus liberty. So it's not just good and evil, it's all sorts of things. Tradition versus innovation, compassion versus cruelty, and they have different things you can pick on your ideologies, and you have to earn culture points to spend them. So the next menu you have over here is Diplomacy. Uh, you can go ahead and click that and then you can click on your empire and you can speak to them if you want to. Oh, and uh, it also shows you your uh, overall rating of good or bad. In this case, we're a little bit below average. 
So the next menu over here is your executive orders. And they have lots of little things like you can get new leaders if you don't like the recruits you already have, you automatically get three more. But it spends 10 control points. These are your control points. You start with one per turn. You can get more per turn if you do a special research to get more. Uh, in this game, if you want to colonize really quick, for 20 control points, you can get a free colony ship. So that takes a lot of logistics out of building your uh, navy up. You can upgrade research. There are a lot of different things you can do from here. Let's go ahead and go over the uh, units that you can move. So when you click a unit, it automatically shows up here. And whatever unit selected shows in the bottom left. And it has, uh, in this case, it's a colony ship in this uh, fleet. So it has a button where you can click on and you can see the citizens. You can tell it to explore, be a sentry go to a specific point and whatnot. Uh, this is an up close of the ships. But here's the fleet. Now let's say you want to separate from the fleet. Before you had to disband, actually all you do is you click on one specific item and then you click on where it wants to go and it will automatically move from the fleet. And uh, it will uh, create a new colony. Now getting back into the leaders and whatnot. When you um, create a new colony, you can't do anything. You can't go into it until you assign a governor. So I'm going to go ahead and get Armer Hernandez. Hernandez, whatever. And you recruit him. And now that you recruited him, when you click on the planet, it automatically goes to your planet view. It has a lot of information about the planet. You highlight the titles. Uh, it'll tell you things. This is a wetland. Uh, it's difficult to use heavy equipment. This is plains, unremarkable land. So you click on it. And then you click on what you want to build and it's already working on it. It can take a while for those to get complete. So that's the basics of the menus. Uh, over here you have the next turn button, which if you have more stuff to do, it'll take you to them automatically, which is why you don't always need to take the next turn button. Like, you can go to your sciences or whatever you want through these various menus, but your science is gonna keep working on its own. And as soon as it's done, you'll see a little science bubble here and you have to click on it and go to your science menu before you're able to move on to the next thing. And then right up above it are little things that come with the game. Uh, they're sort of things in your inventory. In this case, they're nanites. Whenever a uh, fleet gets damaged, they can automatically repair it. Now here's a system of redundant menus. This is your advisors. You have advisors for different things and they give you uh, tidbits of information right here. You can also go to your summary where you can see about where you rank with the rest of the world. So I guess this is available in other menus, but it's oversimplified here. And this is a list of the planets you've colonized and the ones that you have yet to colonize. This is an overview of your ships that you already have and your star bases and shipyards. So this is a redundant menu, but it's oversimplified, so that might be the only reason you would really want to use it. Let's see, I've got these little fleets here. Because I have a ship with unassigned orders, it won't allow me to do anything until I tell the ship what to do. Now the last menu I could go over is the science menu. Uh, 
it's a little weird in the alpha version because you can't actually see the tech tree but it'll give you four main options of what you can do and your science advisor's recommendation and if you don't like the recommendations they have more specific ones like this is an all military focused or an all colony focused and that's the basics of menus in this game thank you for watching another episode of ss street fighter leave a like leave a comment and click subscribe to join the street fighter arm i'd also like to send a thank you to my patreon supporters charles and nancy